Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and this is the next update to my Strat reboot project. In the last video, I completely repainted this body with metallic nail polish. I'm pretty happy with it now. I think it looks really, really fun. I mean, honestly, if I was going for like a relic look, I could just let this sit as is, and this would all kind of chip away and reveal the wood underneath eventually, and the the, uh, the base coat of the gold and whatnot. But I want to put a clear coat on this and sand it smooth and get it nice and glossy and polish it and whatnot. So I'm going to experiment with this stuff. Spray Max 2K Clear Glamour. It's got a lot of warnings on there. Yeah, and I read it too. This is serious business. I'm gonna be wearing a face mask. Um, this is interesting stuff. It hardens chemically, from what I understand. It doesn't air dry. You take this red part off of the cap, and then you put it down here, and you pound it, and it pops open a catalyst container inside that mixes with the spray and this stuff chemically hardens on whatever you spray it on and then the can itself bricks after like 48 hours at certain temperatures and it's kind of warm right now so I might not even have that much time. From what I was reading, uh, you gotta give yourself 10 minutes between coats. I don't wanna get super thick on this. I mean, part of what I was trying to get away from is a super thick feeling coat of paint. Um, this does not feel thick compared to what was on there before. So I'm pretty hopeful that I'll get a nice thin sanding coat on here and be able to, uh, you know, kind of get a nice shine off of it. So let's take it out to the shed, see how it goes. I mean, here's a little preview of what the guitar is going to look like when it's done. I've got my uh, pre-wired pick guard here from Gun Street Wiring Shop, graciously donated to this project. I think this is going to look really cool. I'm really excited about this. All right, let's go do this thing. I'm back. It's the next day. I let this thing cure in the shed overnight. It's been about 20 hours, I'd say. I'm really impressed with this uh, this clear coat stuff. I used an entire can on this. It feels pretty dang thin. Thin enough that I'm a little worried about sanding it. I do want to sand it to be pretty smooth because it is pretty bumpy right now. Um, I don't want it to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. There's a lot of like little imperfections and stuff and you know, the, uh, the painted on finish is pretty, uh, inconsistent. It, I mean, it's never going to trick anyone to thinking it's not hand painted on because that is what's going on here, but it kind of lends it this kind of brushed, you know, like, a what is it called? That gilded gold sort of look, even though it's green. <laughs> It is green, by the way. Some people think this guitar is gold. Nope, this is green. Um, yeah, it's it's time to do sanding. It's time to knock this stuff down. I went and got myself some 800 grit wet sanding paper. I'm just going to kind of lightly kind of try to flatten out most of it. Um, just take down the bumps a bit. And then I might hit it with some swirl remover. Hand polish it. I'm going to try. I do have a big old uh, Milwaukee buffer thing that I've used on surfboards in the past. Um, I kind of want to keep this as hand done as possible just for the concept of what I'm doing. I think in the future, because I've been having so much fun with this series and you guys seem to like it, I think I'm going to try my hand at doing some much nicer finishes, get myself an airbrush, you know, do, do the right thing, you know, do the correct way to do this. But this has definitely been a fun experiment for me and I'm really looking forward to uh, getting this thing shined up 
and put together. Let's do it in this video. There's no reason why this video has to be, you know, the next in the series before the finale. Let's make this the finale. All right, let's go sand this thing. Back from sitting outside, sanding this thing on the back porch. Trying to give it a hand polish with a swirl remover. Um, I've never tried to do that before. I've always used, you know, my big Milwaukee polishing machine to do polishing. And I, I did not get uh, the results I was hoping for. And so I gave up. <laughs> I got pretty nervous right off the bat because even that 800 grit sandpaper was digging in deep enough. You can see my pants here, my shirt. There was, there's green in it, in the, uh, in the dust that's coming off this thing. I don't know if the clear coat sucked some of the pigment out of that nail polish and had green in it, or I don't know if the high spots in the nail polish were just poking through and so I was picking up green from that. Um, it doesn't look like it's any less finished than it was before. There's a couple of places little place right, right, right there where um, a chip of paint came off. A little chip right there. I think that's where there were, uh, there were bubbles in the, uh, in the nail polish. Not at all in the condition I was hoping for to wrap this thing up. Um, I was able to knock back the orange peel quite a bit, the raised bits quite a bit, but it's far from perfect and I don't think I'm gonna get it perfect. Um, but I think I can get it closer to better um, with another coat of this expensive, clear, dangerous spray stuff. So I think I'm going to let it dry out in the sun a little bit. And then I'm going to give it another coat and then I'll be back tomorrow to maybe give it a fresh wet sand. Maybe a machine polish with my Milwaukee. Try to get it shiny even if it's not perfectly smooth and then put this thing together. All right, time lapse, here we go. All right, <laughs> last day, day number three of uh, this final step here, this final video with this guitar, as far as the refinishing goes. Um, yesterday, after wet sanding it, I was just like, it's just in too rough a condition. Um, I was trying to hand polish it with some swirl remover and I decided I'd put another coat of clear on it. I had another bottle of this stuff and I used the whole dang thing which sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot using two coats of clear on this, uh, two cans of clear, but the original finish I had on this that I put on there, that glitter finish, I think I used like five or six cans of clear on that just to bury all that glitter. So in the grand scheme of things, yeah, this stuff is expensive. Um, it's like 20 bucks a can or something like that. And I used two cans of it but like five or six cans of what was probably like $8 clear. In the grand scheme of thing, it all comes out in the wash and this stuff sets so quick. Uh, it's been probably 15 hours since I sprayed this, but I checked on it last night, a few hours after spraying it. I just you know, pressed where, you know, the pit guard or something would cover it it was completely set, it was completely hard and dry after a few hours of setting. 
So yeah, this stuff is pretty incredible, um, especially after, you know, the previous finish I had on this that probably took like a, a year to stop being soft <laughs> with, uh, I think I was using that, uh, that triple thick Rust-Oleum gel, which is also similar to what I used on this. This turned out pretty great, but it's another guitar that I had hanging up in the garage for months and months and months waiting for that clear finish that wasn't even that thick on this one. I figured it out how to get it um, quite a bit thinner than my first attempt on this guitar. It still took months to not be kind of soft where you could like press your fingernail into it. So the debate is, I mean, this stuff is pretty nasty. There's warnings all over it. Everyone who talks about this stuff is like, be careful. I was clutching my mask to my face while I was spraying it. Um, I'm not, you know, the biggest perfectionist in the world, even when it comes to safety, but I was trying to heed everybody's warnings. Um, next time I use my mask, I'm gonna throw fresh filters in it because I'm gonna assume that they're done now. Um, but you can't argue with the results. It's rock hard, it's not soft at all to a fingernail. This second coat turned out really glossy. I don't feel the need to polish this. There is an orange peel thing going on that I could take down with more wet sanding and then a polish with you know, my big buffer. But I'm kind of loving the idea of this being a completely hand done refin. I hand painted on the fingernail polish and then just with two cans of spray and a little bit of hand done wet sanding, it's a finish that I'm happy with. It's certainly far from perfect. There's a lot of character in this finish to say the least, but that's kind of what you get doing this hand painted option. It, when it's all said and done, um, this is like a $60, $70 home refin job. And I think it looks really cool. I'm, just, I'm stoked to put this thing together. So let's do it. Start taking the tape off and start slamming this guitar back together. Uh, I'm gonna put new tuners on the neck as well. One of the reasons I'm replacing these tuners is that the plastic rings in between the tuner head and the body of the tuner are disintegrating. And it's just not a fun look or feel. And I've got these tuners, so might as well use them, right? Before I put new tuners on this, I think I'm just gonna give the headstock a nice clean. And Dario cleaning kit, spray cleaner. All right, there we go. That's a lot better. It's not perfect, but I don't want perfect. I still want this guitar to feel a little lived in, you know? New tuner time. I'm assuming one is low E. Good thing I checked. It is backwards. One is high E. That would have been embarrassing. Yeah, I might use these adapter plates. It looks like they all lock together and hold an angle. Smart design. And then I'm not pushing new holes into this or having to drill new holes. Since they all kind of lock together in a row, I don't think I'm gonna need to put screws in them or anything like that to hold them still. They're kind of going in at an angle. I don't know if I'm hot on that. Am I using the wrong plate? All 
I need to get some of those rocket sockets that some of the uh, other builders have. And Cusack uses those. Josh Scott uses them. I know they're used for like pedals and whatnot, but they would have been so handy right now. So this is kind of like putting lipstick on a pig too. This neck is already pretty worn in. And I'm putting these fancy pants locking ratio tuners on them. <laughs> This is one of the few necks I have where I've played it enough that I've got divots in the frets. I'm about to get a lot of comments from people in the uh, stainless steel fret cult that insist that all guitars need to have stainless steel frets. They're fine, I guess, but it takes me a long time to wear a divot into a fret. I've had this guitar 20 years. That's how long. And the divots aren't interrupting the functionality of the fret at all. All right, that looks right. It looks normal. <laughs> Way beefier looking than it did before. <laughs> Spending way more time on tuners than I hoped. Should have done this off camera. Oops. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> oh, way to go, Ryan. Piece of crap. Thought surely I must not be going deep enough. Went all the way through like the jackass that I am. Time I had someone comment on one of these videos, like, oh, I wouldn't let that guy within a mile of my guitar. I agree. I am not for hire. I should not be doing work on anybody's guitars other than my own guitars, and I'm totally fine wrecking. It's always funny to me. You know, I, I post all the troll comments, not all of them, but the ones that are entertaining to me on Instagram and around on Facebook and whatnot. It's interesting to me that people think that they can Cut me down a notch or hurt my feelings. I'm telling you right now. No one knows how bad I am at stuff like me. And the things I think about myself and say to myself about myself. Yeah, there's nothing you guys can best me on as far as that goes. But I think that's part of the creative process. So many times we cover ads on the podcast where someone's just mangled a guitar and it's funny just how much I relate to the person <laughs> that has done the mangling. I know where their head's at. I know what they were thinking. They weren't. Because that's what I'm thinking when I do stuff like that. To say the least, this is definitely not a channel where you come for expert opinion, expert instruction. And that's not the point of any of this. This is for experimentation. This is for documentation of terrible mistakes. Really at the end of the day, I think my purpose on YouTube as a gear channel is to be uh, your friend on the internet. Your guitar friend who does dumb stuff that you can tell your friends about. Oh, my friend Ryan. Oh, that asshole. Painted his guitar with nail polish. <laughs> what an idiot. He was putting tuners in, he drilled straight through the headstock. And not in the way you're supposed to. What a moron. <laughs> kind of looks cool though. The 
person we should be blaming is Leo Fender. If he hadn't made these guitars so modular and so easy to mess with, I probably wouldn't be here messing with them. If I'd started out as like a Gibson boy, loving Gibson guitars, I never would have taken a set neck guitar and experimented with refinishing it or changing everything on it, swapping all kinds of hardware and pickups and stuff because you just leave those as is. Fender guitars, they're just begging you. They're just begging you to modify them. And I think that's one of the reasons I'm so, that's one of the reasons I'm just so drawn to this sort of concept. It's also funny to me to uh, think about how I know I'm gonna get criticisms for various aspects of this guitar from the, uh, for lack of a better term, the boomer crowd, the perfectionist crowd. When <laughs> they're probably the same people who will just get so hard for a Van Halen, Frankenstein, uh, you know, kind of tribute sort of thing where every little speck and detail and piece of character in the paint is reproduced in loving detail to historical accuracy. And they don't look at, they look at that guitar and they see, you know, a piece of history, but they don't have the, uh, they don't have the, uh, the personal realization that they're looking at a very shoddy, you know, like home done refin. And if I suddenly became an amazing guitarist and somehow became very famous and someday someone, some builder out there was obsessing over every detail of this guitar as they were building a signature tribute. This will never happen, but as they were building a signature tribute, Ryan Burke Stratocaster, they'd be in here reproducing the little bubbles, trying to get the brush strokes right, <laughs> trying to get the orange peel texture just right. And the boomers of the future be like, oh man, it got pretty close, but not all the way. It didn't The orange peel is a little different here on the lower horn. They missed that, uh, that fingerprint on the back. Right now, sensitive types are unsubscribing because they can't handle hearing someone talk about boomers. Get in on the joke, have fun, relax. Bridge is in. Something I love about this trim is this long bar. I'm, I'm using the original Mexican trim in here, original block and everything, thin block. There's something about this trim though. Like I've, I've replaced the block in this guitar before and gone back to the original Mexican thin block because something about it just feels right to me. I've got my pickups here from Octave Doctor. I'll put a link down below. This is what started all this. This company wrote me, it's like, hey, can I send you pickups? And normally I'd be like, man, installing pickups is a really kind of tricky video to make. So I'm gonna pass. But I was feeling <laughs> open to the idea in the moment. So I took them up on it. And the more I thought about it, I do need a, uh, a good set of just normal strap pickups. I'm pretty sure that's what they sent me.
It'll be fun to have a guitar with a proper Strat sound to it again. You'd think being a, uh, you know, a surfy guy, I'd always have a proper Strat around, but it's been a long time. I'm always modifying my Strats. My closest thing to a proper Strat is my baritone. It's got a Telecaster headstock. And it's a baritone. All right, I've got uh, two different instructions here. Installation guide for strand, installation guide for a standard strat setup from Octave Doctor, and I have a special note here from Gun Street Wiring Shop because this is a little bit of an extra special pickguard wiring. Note on the back says call, email, text if I run into issues because of course. I know it's a uh, pretty uh, ghetto, but I'm going to use some electrical tape to close these up. It's because I don't have any heat shrink right now. I wish I did. I'm all out. But there's plenty of uh, wire here that can just trim that gooey gunk off if I ever need to. But man, electrical tape kind of sucks for this. Not in its ability to protect the solder, but in the gunk it leaves behind. I hate cleaning up that stuff. Either this pickguard is just a little off from spec, or my guitar is off from spec. It is a uh, late 90s Mexican. It needs a little extra space around the bridge, so I'm just going to shave some of this out a little bit with a with a pocket knife. Slightly better, but not ideal. I'll make adjustments to it later. Before I go too far, I should take the uh, the plastic guard off. All right, I think that's the final solder. Time for strings. We'll go with these Diderio 10s. No reason to burden this guitar with a heavy set of 11s. I should test it. Before I get too far ahead of myself, make sure the pickups work. Should have done that before I buttoned it all up. It works. That's still no guarantee of anything. It could be out of phase or, you know, something wonky like that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I didn't wire it up, so probably not. But in the past, when I've wired up strats, almost every single time, I make mistakes. Locking tuners are just too cool. <laughs> make life so easy. All right. All strung up. You know what that means. 
It's time to put knobs on this and then we'll tune it. <laughs> what knobs am I gonna give this thing? Ooh. These are some of my most favorite knobs on the planet. I don't know why, I just like them. I pulled them off a cheap old Yamaha amp and I just think they look really cool. I just happen to have three of them. Is it gonna fit though? They're a little bit taller than a regular strat knob. That might bug me eventually, but, and I do love the way they look, especially with the rest of this black hardware on here. I need to get a black switch tip for this at some point. All right, let's tune it up and see how it sounds. It's been one week since I last filmed this thing. Oh man, what a week. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna tune this thing up and play it and show what it sounds like now that I put it all back together. And uh, it was buzzing out across the fretboard. I was like, ah, this thing needs a setup. I'll set it up tomorrow and I'll film the last bit. And then I uh, woke up the next day and my computer was dead, like all the way dead, super, super dead. So I had to order a new one. It showed up, I got set up, I'm all ready to uh, edit and everything like that. So I thought I would finally come back and finish this video series that's been taking me weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> but in that time, I've had time to reacquaint myself with this guitar, get it set up just how I like it, have some fun playing with it. I've been sitting on the couch playing through my little Boss Katana battery amp and whatnot. Um, man, I missed this thing. I missed this guitar. This guitar has been through a lot with me. At least three bands. I wrote most of the material for my surf bands album on this guitar. I'm just very intimately connected to the feel of this thing. It is my Strat, you know, uh, and I'm pretty excited to have it have a classic normal Strat sound now before I had some, you know, odd pickups in there that sounded great really nice and smooth and creamy, but they didn't sound stratty. So I finally have a stratty sounding guitar. Uh, let's check it out. Here is the bridge position. Twangy and bright. The way Strat's supposed to be. Here's the number two position. Middle. Number four. Neck position. has been pretty dang tuning stable for a long time because I've got GraphTech saddles on there and a GraphTech nut and even a GraphTech string saddle and now I've got their ratio tuners on there. Uh, after spending a week with them, man these things are cool. Uh, I mean they, at least on some of the strings, it feels like the ratio is dramatically increased compared to like a normal guitar. Like I gotta crank that low E tuner for a while to get up to tuning if I drop down to D or something like that. It really is like a full rotation to get down to D. It's actually like a like almost a perfect 180 to go from one pitch to the other.
And they're all supposed to be ratioed so that you can do the same amount to drop keys across the entire set of tuners, which is just kind of a trip. So I could memorize where, you know, what, how much of a rotation I need and just go from D to E super quick. Let's talk about the other pickup trick on here because I had a wiring harness put together by Gun Street Wiring Shop. I was able to ask for a little extra thing. We've got a push pull here on that middle knob. And what that does is it's a, uh, it's a series parallel switch and it puts these two pickups and these two pickups into a different wiring so that instead of running like a normal strat, they turn into a humbucker pickup. And not just because they're bucking hum, but because the electricity is flowing through them in a different path, which makes them sound like a humbucker. So uh, check this out. Here is the number two position on the normal setting. Here it is without pulled. It just has that kind of barky, like smoother humbucker sort of sound versus that stratty kind of hollow quack. Same thing up here between the neck and the middle. Here it is normal strat. Here it is pulled out. Let's try it with some drive. Here's a little bit of overdrive. That's the normal Strat sound. Here it is pulled out. Back to the number two position. Normal Strat sound. Pulled out. so much i'm gonna say right now if you have a strat and you're looking for a more humbuckerish tone out of it don't drop you know a hot rail in there or you know like a mini bucker or something like that mess around with a, a series parallel switch because that honestly sounds pretty dang convincing to me oops <laughs> this guitar so much more versatile than it was without interrupting you know the strattiness of it because I want that strat single coil tone sometimes you want that humbucker you know, thick, meaty bark to it. All right, let's throw some surf sounds at this because, of course. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know what I was going for at the end there. Uh, but man, I was having fun. This guitar just, you know, it just fits like a glove for me now. I'm pretty dang happy with this. I'm happy with the new tuners. I'm happy with the new pickups. I'm happy with the new paint. I'm happy with the new wiring. <laughs> it's a complete reboot on this thing. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments down below. So anyways, thanks to Craft Tech. Thanks to Octa Doctor. I mean, they're the ones that really <laughs> made me decide to fully reboot this thing. Thanks to Gun Street Wiring Shop. Click the links down below to all three of those companies. And uh, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt down below. Uh, you know, do all the stuff. Click all the things. Use my Amazon affiliate links, my eBay affiliate links, all those affiliate links. Sweetwater, use Sweetwater's affiliate links to buy something, buy yourself a treat, I don't know, and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.